Good morning, everyone. I'm Erica Fernandez with CTIC Communications, and we are live today at Clear Springs High School inside Miss Lowman's Akemi at Lowman's class today, Anatomy and Physiology. We're so excited to be here. Uh, so many fun things you, your students are already working on. Tell us a little bit about what you guys are going through right now. Oh, well, right now we're learning about the skeletal system, so we're learning about how our body's skeleton protects and supports our uh, body and interacts with other body systems. Yeah, and we have a fun gadget that you guys are using right behind us. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about this technology that the students get to use. Oh, we're so excited. Our students have the opportunity to work on this machine. Uh, so the Anatomage machine is a, a digital dissection machine, but really what they're doing is using their fingers to dissect a human cadaver, an actual human cadaver that has been digitized and uploaded into this software. Uh, so they're basically doing like a surgery practice, so to speak. And uh, this is a machine that is only used usually in medical schools. Um, so we're very excited that we are able to use it at the high school level and the students are able to get training like medical students at Clear Springs High School. And you guys are actually able to get this due to a grant, right? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, yes, yeah, so this machine costs uh, $50,000. Uh, I tell the students it costs as much as a swimming pool in my backyard back when we got it. And, uh, but um, th I decided I was going to apply for a grant. I didn't think there was any chance I was going to get it. I just applied for it with the Clear Creek Education Foundation. And then all of a sudden one day they surprised me with the prize patrol and um, I got the grant. So we were able to get the table. Um, it's really exciting because we are the only high school or one of the only high schools schools in Texas that has a table like this at the high school. It's amazing. And so how have you seen that this technology is changing the way that the students are able to learn about the body um, in new and exciting ways? Uh, it, it is a completely different way of looking at the body. So uh, when we're looking at it in diagrams, it's two dimensional. On here, we're actually able to visualize how the pieces piece together in the body um, and they're able to interact with it. Uh, for example, they can actually uh, pull out just the nervous system and watch how all the nerves um, are, are firing in the body with the brain. Um, or they can put that down and just pull out the skeletal system, which is what we're doing today, um, and learn all the, uh, the parts of the skeletal system, the bones, the ligaments, um, how they interact with muscles. Um, it's, um, and there's also ways that they can do different procedures like surgeries, uh, which are very interactive, such as placing a stent in the heart um, or doing other sorts of, of catheterization, cardiac catheterization, um, which are very interactive. And it's very accurate for what they're doing in the hospitals. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, we'll let you go ahead and get started. I know you guys are doing a lesson and the kids are also working on uh, something over there on the technology, so we'll let you get started. Okay, awesome. All right, thank you. Oh. Oh, we're going to see Yeah, this one, so if this one is... Oh, oh, wait, oh, wait, wait, wait. oh, do you want to see the bladder? Yeah, can you so the bladder? this is interesting because it shows what happens... Oh, oh, it's it's still still oh. oh, there we go. So... Let me flip it around really oh, quick. They accidentally cut the baby in half and saw all the yeah. organs. Isn't that cool? It was yeah. cool. Let me flip really this cool. around. It just takes a second to flip it around. There we go. Okay, so if you look and see, so if we turn off the baby, let's see if there's a way to do that. But let me show you. Let me rotate her. That right there. Oh, that is the bladder. Oh, because like the baby's oh, pushing the So normally the bladder oh. in the body is round yeah. and yeah. full of liquid, yeah. and oh, when some one, just like a little bit. <laughs> the baby is pushing down on the bladder, and that is all the space that mothers have. Um, and also, if you notice, all of her digestive organs have been replaced by uh, the growing baby. And so all of her organs that would have normally been in her abdominal region have now been pushed up into her thoracic region. Um, and that's why we see patients that present with a lot more symptoms of things like um, heartburn, acid reflux, because it's 
Mm -hmm. oh, it's pushed oh. up into the esophagus. Her pelvis looks like it's also expanded. Yeah, it is. So um, in pregnancy, uh, especially at the end of pregnancy, a mother's body releases a hormone mm -hmm. that actually does loosen the connective ligaments to allow the pelvis to expand uh, to increase the birth canal for the baby's head to fit through. Because oh. mm. that's actually what limits the size of our cranium is being able to fit through the birth canal. Otherwise, our head and our cerebrum would have just continued to grow. But we were limited. Oh. Probably for the best. Probably for the yeah. best. <laughs> we do have the largest cerebrum of all the mammals. So we do have that going for us, thankfully. So going up in here. <laughs> she does look a little tired. Uh, I mean, I think it's fitting that she's pregnant and yeah. this is what she looks like. Um, but another cool thing is we should be able to turn on the heart. And so if we pull this and I'll show you. Let's see. This is the, oh, this is the fetal visibility. So what we can do is turn off the skin and just look at the heart. Let me turn off. Oh, why? There it's we like go. Your bracelets were hanging out too. So it's oh, it's because of my bracelets. Should we, you know, if the baby's a boy or it's a girl? It's oh, I could probably turn. Um, yeah, because the. I mean, you could look at. <laughs> so let's turn on cardiovascular on the baby. There we go. And there you have its heart beating. Can you see that? And then we can speed up or slow down the heart rate there. So a uh, faster heart rate is tachycardia. And then we can give it some bradycardia and slow oh, it down. Oh and then you'll see that reflected on the ECG. And then we can also show how it synchronizes with the mothers. Let's see, so let's turn off digestive, respiratory, and let's pull out the heart, and we're going to turn off the pericardium, and we're going to start her heart here. There's the moms. There we go. Okay, so now if we compare them, Here's the mother's heart and baby's heart. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. Don't, um, like, female babies tend to have a faster heart rate than males? Or is that just, like, an old wives' tale? Hmm. I've heard of that before. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about that. I mean, there are all, there's all sorts of things. Like, yeah. if they're female, then you crave a certain thing. Or male, they crave a certain thing. But that's actually, for the most part, there hasn't been. We haven't found many actual correlations with that. What's like a healthy heart rate? Because a healthy heart rate, um, you you want your resting heart rate to be um, uh, somewhere below 80. Um, so somewhere between 60 to 80 would be really good. So hers is kind of his is very low then. If it's a little lower, then that's okay. Um, usually baby heart rates are going to be a little faster, actually. Yeah. Is it because they're growing so much? They're, they're just smaller. Oh. Mm-hmm. So any, it's, it's size related. Um, elephant's hearts beat slower and a hummingbird's heart beats a lot faster. faster. Oh, yeah, okay. just based on size, simply. I'm a little bit curious. Um, did, you said that the mother and the baby's heart beat, like, beat roughly the same beats per minute, right? Or like the same rhythm. They, um, the baby is going to be faster than the mother, but the baby is experiencing a lot of what the mother is. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, so this entire time we did not have to cut the baby open. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting way away from the skeletal unit here. <laughs> Let me put it back to bones. Okay.
we can definitely do that. So we're just going to go back to a, um, well, we'll just pull out since we have her open right now. We'll just look at her skeletal system. All right, so can anyone, oop. So using our knowledge that we have, uh, can anyone show me where the sternum is? Right here. Yeah, good. Uh, what about the axillary area? Good. Um, and then, uh, Murray, why don't you show me where um, the uh, the cervical area would be? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh, that, so that whole area is a cervical area, and the thyroid is located in the cervical area. Um, how about our quadrants, our body quadrants? It's a little hard because we have the baby there. So, it's like this way. Mm -hmm. So there are thoracic quadrants, mm -hmm. um, but we are we focus on the abdominal quadrants okay. to quickly assess a patient and triage mm -hmm. um, their whether they need to be seen immediately. Uh, so where which quadrant would the um, the liver be in? The right upper quadrant. Yeah, yeah. because oh, it's reverse. Yeah. Yeah, so the reverse. It's always the patient. It's always the patient's perspective. And uh, what is located right under the liver? The gallbladder. gallbladder. The gallbladder. So if we look at this, you can see, gosh, it's hard with that baby there, which is also how you feel when you're pregnant. <laughs> uh, let me see. Oh, I might, have, I might have turned off digestive. Let me see. Oh, that's why. That's the baby. There we go. Oh, this is baby. There we go. When the baby is in the um, womb, does it have like the same quadrants, or are they all shifted to the baby? Oh, the baby has the same structures in the same quadrants as we do. Okay. And they're but they're smaller. They're forming, but they're in they're in the place the general places that they're going to be. So I'm kind of curious. Does the mother's quadrants do they shift up a little bit whenever she's pregnant? Like especially like heavily pregnant. Like yes. On. Which so that needs to be taken into account in a patient that's okay. pregnant. Uh, so oh okay oh are you done? Sorry. Oh. oh okay. So if we look. <laughs> All right, that wraps up our time here at Clear Springs High School in Ms. Lohman's Anatomy and Physiology class. We'll see you guys next time.